Andy Mogul. Friday 101 is about to begin. If you're looking for a particular segment, click one of the topics listed below. Hey Indie Mogulers, Russell here. While doing the live show a couple weeks ago, a few viewers noticed my DIY teleprompter in the background. Now I'm not great at building things, and when I watch most DIY videos, I'm with it up to the point where the tools come out, things are getting soldered, sawed, etc. Then I just go, okay, guess I won't be making this one. So this will be my first DIY installment for people like myself. This is the first installment of Friday 101's DIY for the Not So Handy. A while back, Griffin made his DIY teleprompter for Indie News, but I don't have a workshop to work with or very much know-how in the area of building things like I mentioned earlier. So I made one that anyone can make with the simplest possible tools, tape and cardboard. And you know, a few bits and pieces from Target and Home Depot. Also, this is a solution for those of us with overly small screens to display the words from, like my very cheap droid phone using the free program Android Prompter. The idea behind a teleprompter is simple. The text is projected straight up at glass, which, at the right angle, bounces that text to the person in front of the camera. The camera's lens doesn't see the same reflection from the opposite side, and can shoot through the glass in such a way that you will be looking directly into it. So we need an enclosure and a setup that puts these pieces in the right place. The build I came up with allows the prompter to be easily attached and detached from my DSLR camera and gets mounted directly onto a tripod. Here's what you need. First, the tools and items you hopefully already have on hand. A tape measure, a razor or box cutter, packing or shipping tape, duct tape, though I buy Gorilla Tape instead because I'm fancy like that, but duct tape will work too, super glue, or in my case, Gorilla Glue because apparently I love adhesives named after gorillas, and a tripod, any tripod. This one here was about 20 or $30 at Best Buy, but I should hope most of you already have one. And now the parts and materials to buy. An 8x10 piece of frame glass taken from this frame that cost $3 at Target. A magnifier sheet that can be found at Staples for $6 and even cheaper on Amazon. Four 3x3 strong tie angles for $2.50 each at Home Depot and a 12 inch by 8 inch T-strap for about $7 also at Home Depot. And of course our cardboard box, which cost about $3.50 at Target with dimensions of 16 inches by 12 inches by 8 inches. Assuming you had all the materials mentioned earlier, we're now at about $30. First, on the bottom part of the box, remove the two shorter flaps with your box cutter. Then flip the box upside down, push the two remaining flaps together and tape them, also taping the entire bottom of the box with your packing tape. Tape should now cover this entire surface. Now turn your box onto its end so it stands up like so. Cut off all remaining flaps on the open side of the box, and for future reference, mark off which side is the top. Turn your box on its side again and mark off the midway point, in this case 8 inches from the top, on both ends. Then, using a flat surface, draw a line that halves the side of the box. Repeat this process on the opposite side. On what is now the back of your prompter box, use your T-strap to make a line across the back that is just a hair closer to the top of the box than the lines on the sides. Going back to the sides, measure along the halfway lines and mark off 2 inches and 3.5 and inches on that line, making sure to measure from the back of the box. This is because the 3x3 angles we're about to use are 1.5 inches wide. Repeat those marks on the opposite side, then use your box cutter to cut between those points on each side. Insert a 3x3 angle through the newly made slot on one side of the box. Make sure the end sticking out is pointed towards the top of the box. Now use packing tape to completely tape over the end on the outside of the box. Repeat this process on the other side. Turn the box upside down again and use your T-strap to find the middle of the line we made before and cut another slot equal to the width of one end of the T. Now we use our glue on the side of the T-strap that will connect to the angles we installed earlier. After applying the glue, push the one end through the slot in the back of the box and line up the other ends with the side angles. Take your duct tape or Gorilla Tape and carefully wrap it around both sides inside the box, adhering the tape as tightly as possible. Back to the rear of the box, hold your camera on the end of the T-strap that is poking out. Create a general outline around your camera and cut this into the back of the box. I added extra room on one side so that my swivel screen on my T3i will be visible from in front of the camera. 
Take your tripod plate and attach it to your camera through the hole on the back of the T-strap. Your camera and its lens should fit nicely through the hole. If more room is needed, now is the time to extend the area you've cut out. The camera is now attached to the box, but there is nothing holding it up. To avoid stress on the T-strap at this point, attach the tripod plate and the camera to the tripod now. Things are looking good at this point, so now let's add our frame glass. With your phone in the bottom of the box as a point of reference, find the best angle for your glass to sit at, which should be at about 45 degrees. Mark where the glass meets the box at this angle, and repeat the same process as we did with our previous 3x3 angles, making sure to once again completely cover the ends on the outside of the box. Now the lens we're looking through right now is pretty wide, so the phone in the reflection looks further away and smaller than it actually is. As you can see, the camera directly across from the prompter is looking directly at the text and directly at the other lens. And this is what the camera attached to the prompter is seeing. You don't want lights to shine onto the glass or the camera in the prompter will see it, but take away the lights and it's a perfectly clean shot. The screen is visible to one camera, which represents the speaker, and not visible to the prompter cam. Now, like I said, the text isn't as tiny in real life as it looks to this wide-angle lens, but it's still pretty small thanks to the fact that it's a very small droid phone. To help this, simply take your magnifier and slide it under the DSLR's camera lens. Again, in real life, this is now twice as big as before and much easier to read at a distance. If you don't have a lens that the magnifying sheet can fit under, you can make another platform out of four additional 3x3 angles just below the others. My favorite part of this build is how easy it is to attach and detach the camera. It's obviously not perfect, sometimes you gotta adjust the glass and the phone, though this isn't really all that difficult. Also, certain wider lenses will catch the bracket and the magnifier on the edges. I use my 28 to 135 millimeter kit lens, and at 28, it's usually okay. Though it sometimes needs a very slight push to about 30 millimeters or so. Teleprompters really are relatively simple, and you can take the basic ideas behind building this one and just adjust it to suit your equipment and needs. Even something as simple as this. A small box with a hole cut into it for the lens to poke through. Take a thin CD case and detach its clear cover. A simple clip can go over that hole to hold the glass in place. Tape it to the top of the box as close to a 45 degree angle as you can. Also a little extra tape to hold the bottom of it on. And again, there you have it. If you've got good vision, of course, on that one. The point is you can make these things pretty easily. If you have the workspace, tools, and technical knowledge to build griffins, that's definitely the way to go. You can make money with that thing, and that's something you probably won't be doing with this. I mean, you can, but it has a tendency to need a little maintenance if you plan on hauling it around everywhere. But for the rest of us who are not so handy and can't speak very well unless our words are written down, this will certainly do. So, what else do you think I should try and make using minimal tools and easy to find parts? Let me know in the comments below. I definitely won't be able to make all of them. Probably not even most of them. But if I see something I might be able to pull off, I'll give it a shot on a future episode. I leave you this week with links to Griffin's DIY teleprompter for you handier viewers, and a few other prompter designs as well. Friday 101 will be off next week, but we'll return the following week and the week after that with back-to-back -back episodes devoted to fight scenes. The big reason I won't be here next week is because we've got a lot to do to prepare this one right here for the vet. She's going in for surgery. It's my ferret Tara. Wish her well. Say hi, Tara. Lens is over there. It's right there. Look at the lens.